Good Sunday, I'm Ed Matthews. Want to get you updated on powerful Hurricane Dorian. This has become a monster hurricane. Look how well defined it is. Very circular, a very circular eye wall here, and you can see it's tracking off to the west. It has continued to get stronger today. Check this, now a category five hurricane. That's as high as we go on the hurricane scale. Sustained winds have increased to 160 miles per hour, and I would bet that there are wind gusts probably approaching 180 miles per hour. It's still moving off to the west at eight miles per hour. Now, we're gonna be watching over the next 24 hours. I'm hoping for more of a northwesterly turn and then a northerly turn. That's gonna be critical as to what impacts it would have on the state of Florida. But it's beginning to move over those beautiful islands in the Bahamas now, and it is gonna be a very destructive storm for a, a good bit of the Bahamas. Bahamian Islands. I want to talk about the computer models because these are very critical uh, in, in terms of forecasting where this thing is going to go. And we look for these lines coming close together. Notice how close together they are off the Georgia and the uh, South Carolina, North Carolina coast. Now what we uh, are thinking that's going to happen is that as it approaches the east coast of Florida, it's going to really slow down. And when a storm slows down, it means that the upper level wind currents are kind of changing a little bit, and that could indicate, indicate a turn in direction. So we think as it slows down, as it approaches the east coast of Florida, it's going to make more of a turn to the north. The sooner the better. Uh, to spare Florida, and we think it's just going to kind of ride just along the coast, east coast of Florida. And then after the northerly turn, we're going to be watching closely for a northeasterly turn. When is it going to turn to the northeast, kind of hugging the southeast U.S. coast? If it turns quicker, of course, it moves farther offshore. So we're going to be watching for two turns over the next several days. A turn to the north as it approaches the state of Florida, and then uh, hopefully a quick turn to the northeast and keeping it off the Carolina coast. But nevertheless, based on the uncertainty of the future track, uh, the guard is up. We're talking about a high alert from the Outer Banks down through Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, into Charleston, and right on down into the state of Florida as well. So what we're going to do, and this is about all we can do at this point, the storm is still 800 miles away. It's just kind of a watch and, watch and wait situation and see how that track materializes over the next several days. Now here's the official forecast track. That's when you take all that model data and you put it together in one official forecast track. This is where the storm is located now, moving over those beautiful Bahamian islands, tracking to the west, going to slow down, we think, on Labor Day as it approaches the Florida coast, and then start to make that turn. Again, the sooner the better in sparing the east coast of Florida. If it stays on a more westerly track, it could easily make landfall in Florida. We're hoping for the turn and it just kind of riding up the east coast of Florida. And then for us here in the Carolinas, we've got to be concerned later this week. And we're talking about in the Thursday and Friday time frame, possibly a category two storm as it approaches Charleston, South Carolina, and then pretty much riding up just off the coast of Myrtle Beach and Wilmington to near Moorhead City on Friday morning. Again, a quicker turn would mean that it would stay farther offshore. That's what we're going to be hoping for. We encourage you to stay with us on our website, WFMYNews2.com. And of course, I'll be having updates on social media today as well, and we'll all track the storm together. Have a great day.